Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. My name is Courtney. I go by Courtney on Posh on all platforms. And today I have someone very special with me, my friend, Melissa. Melissa, can you tell us where we can find you? Okay, you can find me at Nioma and me on IG or on Poshmark. And it's just N-I-O-M-A-A-N-D-M-E. And Nioma was my grandmother. So that's where that came from. And me is obviously me. Yeah, that was gonna be my first question was gonna be, do you get asked all the time if your name, if that's your name, if people confuse that? Yeah, when I was at Posh Fest, people were like, hey, Naoma, and I'm just like, hey. <laughs> but I think too, if that's your grandma, I think too, if that's your grandma, that's gotta bring like a little joy to your heart too, just to- It does. 100%, I feel like it's cool. I get to share her with everybody and she would be so, so proud of this and think it's like the most amazing thing so i it just makes it really special for me so I love that. Yeah. how long have you been reselling for um it's been 17 months so i've been on poshmark i think since 2017 but uh yeah 2017 and then reselling for 17 months so and it was just accidental like list a couple banana republic things on my closet and then the light bulb went off like holy heck, there's a lot of opportunity here. <laughs> I think that's how most of us get started in this. <laughs> so are yeah. you currently full-time or part-time? Right now, during quarantine, I'm full-time, but in my everyday life, I do it part-time where um, my full-time job is a bartender, 40 hours a week, so I manage to do it. I say part-time, but it seems to take a lot of time. <laughs> I want to eventually transition full-time into it. That's my overall goal. So with that, with saying that it kind of takes up a lot of your time, how do you juggle that when okay. normal? Uh, key for me, hiring a virtual assistant. Um, that takes a lot of pressure off your plate, not have to constantly share your closet. And it frees you up to do things like sourcing, um, listing, photographing. Um, usually I break my day down into parts. So the first part of the day, I might photograph or just do the verbal part of the listing and then after work I come home and usually finish it and I aim for like ideally it would be to seven listings a day but working full-time a lot of times I get like three to five when I am working full-time uh quarantine right now I'm getting about seven listings a day I would like to do more but that is also based off of like what I'm able to source right now so <laughs> So you say that you take your photos and stuff in the morning and then you list at night. Do you do that strategically because you see better results when you list at night or is that just how it happens? Uh, it kind of happens that way, but I do strategically see better results at night. I think a lot, I'm on the East Coast. So when I'm coming home late at work a lot, I think the West Coast is in their prime time of being on Poshmark. So I find listing late has worked to a benefit 100%, definitely. And you're on the East Coast. You're in Pittsburgh, PA. Yeah. <laughs> 412, baby. Black and yellow. <laughs> oh, very cool. Black and yellow, black and yellow. <laughs> so <laughs> going back to when you first got started, what is one piece of advice? Because our community is so strong and there's so much advice out there. What's one piece of advice that you wish you didn't listen to? Uh, that's an excellent question. I would say going on Instagram, people talking about non-buying signs. I wish I never listened to that. Um, I really limited myself to listen to that. For example, people are like, oh, if you get 10 likes from the same buyer, chances are of them buying, it's never going to happen. And that's not true at all. Maybe they won't buy those 10 items, but they might buy three or four items. And I wish I never heard that advice because at first I listened to it. And then once I was like, no, I'm missing out on things and like change my strategy on that and be like, these are buying signs. It totally flipped the game absolutely. on bundles, 100%. I absolutely agree with that. If I went into your closet right now and I liked 10 items, how are you going to interact with me to get me to purchase? Um, usually I like to reach out to people. Um, I look to see if they're new, if they're new and maybe like, just like a bunch of things, I let them know, Hey, I offer, I do offer 25% off bundles of three plus more items. 
Uh, if it's over $100 or gets up there, I also like to offer free shipping. So I just kind of feel them out. I see if they're a seller, I see if they're new, and then kind of work off the vibe. Excellent advice. When you reach out to them, are you reaching out in public comments or are you reaching out in the bundle feature? I reach out in the bundle feature. Yeah, absolutely. I like to keep it more personal. Yes. Because uh, especially uh, sometimes people start talking pricing and I don't want it to be publicly. And then I, I just like think it's more personal. And yeah. For me, I like to use the bundle feature to reach out. Yeah, absolutely. I should note too, just in case anyone here is new with Posh, the bundle feature, although it's private for the moment, it's not technically fully private because you can go in and you can see what anyone has bundled. Um, so just keep that in mind. So you always- Oh, I never thought of that. <laughs> um, excellent. So- that's one thing that you wish you didn't listen to. What's one thing that you absolutely are so thankful that you listened to? Okay, this is kind of um, sad because I waited really long to do this and I learned it at Posh Fest. <sighs> Having a separate account for Poshmark, your banking account, that's what I'm talking about. Um, I wish I did that from the beginning. It just makes things so much easier, purchasing supplies, keep them separate. Uh, reusing that money to source. I wish I did that from the start and it seems very obvious and it's not something I think a lot of people talk about on like Instagram. They talk about making sales, but I think that is a very important part that gets left out a lot of times. I absolutely agree. Do you have, do you use a business banking account or just a regular personal expert? I set up, the way my bank did it was setting up a second checking account from my personal account and then I was able to label it whatever I wanted. I think they just did that for fee purposes to be yeah. honest with you. Yeah I feel that. <laughs> they always try to get you somehow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so while we're talking about money I'll never ask you your numbers but if you don't mind sharing how do you go about budgeting when you're sourcing if there is a budget? I do have a budget Pre-quarantine, my budget, I would say, was between $250 to $300 a week sourcing, which I could get way more for that at thrift stores. Um, online sourcing right now, I'm spending definitely way more money, but I'm also paying up for, I don't want to say better, I guess brands that sell maybe a little bit higher. So I don't right now haven't been budgeting myself as good sticking to that budget, I'll say. Yeah. That's bad to say. That is the nice thing too about online sourcing. You do pay more, but you're able to get brands that you probably wouldn't come across in the thrift store. What's your, 100%. What's your brand that you're like, I have to, I have to source this online because it's like amazing. I'm obsessed with Spell and the Gypsy Collective. <laughs> Aren't we all? They're yes. So, and you've sold a couple pieces. I was yes. uh, talking your... Do they sit a long time for you? or is um, that... The first piece I sold, it sold immediately within, I think, two hours of listing. And then what I learned to do was hang on to pieces to they're no longer available and kind of scarce. So I hold, I held on the past couple pieces I sold, I've held on to since last summer and they went pretty quickly. That is yeah. such great advice because we all know that if something is oversaturated, that it's going to be a lot harder to sell and you're probably going to sell it for less. So if you can hold on to it until the market goes down, you're going to make so much more money. You, my friend. It is. Brilliant. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to do though. <laughs> so yeah, that's a brand that we all absolutely would love. What are some brands that you used to love picking up that you no longer like to pick up with, you know, um, change? It's, I will say some of the anthropology stuff. Like I used to get super excited to see anthropology and now I'm learning like some of their styles. Like at first I love seeing Pilcro and Letterpress. I was like, oh my God. And then I pick up their pants and they just sit and I'm like, but then I still pick them up sometimes. I'm like, why do I do this to myself? They're going to sit. You're not going to get a lot of money for them. I don't know. It's so weird. But I would definitely say it's to comp, to look at the comps for a lot of the anthropology brands. Yeah. Is there one anthropology brand that sticks out to you that does still do well for you? I recently listed a couple of Rena Gill pieces. I don't know if I'm saying that right. And they get a lot of 
action, but I haven't moved them yet. So I'm just kind of, the one is new with tags, so I'm holding up, or one's from my own personal closet. But uh, Farm Rio, I definitely would love to get hold of that though. Absolutely. 100. <laughs> it's so funny, that has the same vibe as Spell and the Gypsy too. So <laughs> are we, are these personal preferences that we're sourcing? <laughs> Uh, yes, and they're, I like very dreamy, ethereal, like romantic type girly stuff. Yeah. Do you, I should have asked this at the very beginning. I'm sorry I missed it. What platforms do you sell on? Macari, uh, obviously Poshmark, eBay. I just started cross listing too. Like I had a store, canceled it, and reopened a store. So I listed, I think, 350 items in the past week to eBay, and then they, cut me off. <laughs> yeah. I'm on hold. <laughs> yeah. What would be your biggest tip for each platform? Because I know they're so different. I would say, um, Macari definitely offering the free shipping helps. And um, I just did a video on this on Macari shipping and people think it's crazy to offer free shipping, but I don't think everyone realizes it's only 10% seller fee. So it kind of balances out if you're covering that shipping with 10%, it would equivalent to the 20% off the Poshmark. Yeah. And but, if it's a light item, you're only shipping it for $4.99, which is awesome. Yes, exactly. I mean, I love Pirate Ship too, because you can ship a lot of things for like $3. I mean, yeah. that was gonna be I'm okay with eating the $3. <laughs> that was going to be my next question. When you do free shipping, um, are you sending it for larger, heavy items? Are you using the FedEx option where it's $10 or are you shipping via Pirate Ship? I usually use Pirate Ship. The only exception I found was um, a pair of Doc Martin boots going to LA. It was cheaper to use UPS through Macari, but that was before the actual sale went down because the guy we were trying to come like try to work out a price that we were both happy with and it came down to figuring out the shipping and he's the one that was like how are you shipping and, he, and it would have been 20 some dollars through pirate shipping he's like if you do it through macari it's only gonna be ten dollars and that's what nailed the sale to get it done did so. the fedex shipping take a really long time with that um i think it took like five days oh okay Excellent. That's not bad for going cross country because I have yeah. some people get worried that the shipping with um, FedEx takes a really long time. So yeah, but I kind of what's going on now too. I think people are more understanding with um, longer delays in shipping, unfortunately. Oh, absolutely. But. absolutely. So when it comes to your whole process from thrifting all the way to selling, what part of the process do you love the most? Packaging? Is that weird? No, not at all. Tell me, what do you do for your packaging? Um, it's pretty simple and basic. Okay, so I do have printed out cards I designed myself, and I do write a handwritten note in each order, and I think that's been huge to really connect with people, and they find it just be special. Even if they just throw it away, I can't believe how much that touches people, but I usually just do craft paper, and just tie a little ribbon around it with my card and like a little thank you sticker on it. And I have my own logo stickers I put on the outside of the boxes. But people seem to like always say your packaging. I just want them to feel special when they see it. Like it brightens their day and they're like, if they're having a bad day or just make someone feel really good for a minute or two or the rest of the day or the week, whatever it is. That's why, that's why a lot is bringing that joy. I love that. Is one of your love languages gift giving? Yeah. <laughs> I can tell. <laughs> but I think that's awesome because I'm a very minimalist when it comes to packaging. Um, and while I don't get a lot of love notes that are like negative in any way, I definitely don't get an overwhelming amount of like, this packaging is awesome. And so I'm sure that you're definitely making people's days when they open that. What about the reverse of that? What is one thing you do not want to do? <laughs> I hate photographing and shipping black garments. Oh, it sounds yeah. weird, 
but there's like they become muddled it's hard to get the detail and then you can lint roll the crap out of it for like a half hour and still find stuff on it so that's the one thing i despise is black or black and red black and red <laughs> is there anything that you have found that can kind of help um newer poshers if they do have a black or red item or are you still figuring it out yourself i do use what is it called pick tap go for editing my photos and I will like them. It definitely helps to see the detail of it, but you gotta be careful that you don't do it too much that the garment looks faded. But that has been pretty crucial in helping me with black garments. To see like pocket detailing or like little ruffles, I would say that's definitely helpful. Love it. What would you, what kind of advice would you give someone who's a new seller who gets a case opened against them? Uh, don't take it personally. <laughs> Be polite about it. And uh, I, a lot of times, it's hard to do. I don't want to say admit fault, but apologize for the inconvenience. Um, there's times where I just don't even want to go through the claim process. And I'll be like, either say, yes, let them, um, I'll, I'll just say approve the claim and they can keep the item and I don't want to deal with it shipping back. It's just for me, honestly, if it's not a lot of money to eat it that way. But I will say, don't get defensive and don't take it personally because that's, I think, the, your first initial reaction is to be like, <sighs> yeah. it's definitely a, a learning process along the way. Yeah. And it it's happens. Gonna happen. You could have the perfect pictures, the perfect measurements, the perfect garment, and it's going to happen. So just be prepared when it does. <laughs> <laughs> I, I agree. Uh, when you go into the thrift store, what is the first section that you go to check out? Shoes or jeans. And do you find that that's because something you personally just love or do you find that those sell the best? Both. Uh, I think you can get higher money for jeans and shoes because it's something someone will wear usually season after season. Um, and I just personally love them. So yeah, I definitely shoes and jeans. You can get more, even like jeans from like six and seven years ago. I can still like, you can make decent money off of. What about what section are you like, ah, stay away? <laughs> Shorts and skirts are difficult. Yeah. Though your video on skirts is amazing. And I did just buy a ton of shorts off of eBay because we're going into the, um, warmer seasons but those are usually things I don't I don't know why I don't grab <laughs> yeah when it comes to taking photos are you a flat lay hanger or mannequin kind of girl mannequin I have to does your mannequin have a name I know some people name yes <laughs> Becky and Nancy <laughs> <laughs> any reason or you just sounded good they just they just like I felt the vibe. I'm like, you're like a Nancy. And I'm like, oh, Becky, it's Brittany. It's Brittany. The oh. one's like Brittany. I just feel like she's like, woohoo, you know, like a fun girl. And the other one's just kind of quiet. And, you know. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's amazing. It's my staff book, too. I have employees. <laughs> I love that. And do you. Obviously now with everyone in quarantine, I know a lot of people are going through death piles. Do you ha usually have a death pile or are you very quick to list things? Quick to list things. Same. It's like opportunity pile 100%. But during this time, I wish I had death pile. <laughs> I feel you. I've <laughs> had a death pile for a year and now I'm like, huh, where's the inventory? <laughs> right. I hate clutter. I can't, I'm like, that's money sitting there. I gotta list it. <laughs> Absolutely. I'll turn into a hoarder for sure. Um, do you pick up things that have any type of stains or anything like that? Do you fix things at all? I do. I actually, my husband got me a sewing machine, which I need to learn how to sew. Um, I carry around and I tell people to be discreet. I hate one of those tied to go pens in the thrift store. And when no one's looking, you just kind of like, hurry up dab it to see if it's going to come out and if I think it's going to come out I do pick it up um and I'm messing around with have you heard of bow nash no bow nash is a no so bonding agent that I've been experimenting with I so once I nail it what's that I have heard of that 
Is yes. It Once I, it, I'm not good with it yet, but the woman who, there's just like British woman who does YouTube videos and hers turn out flawless. And I, I still have to nail the, I can like mend it, but you can still tell a little bit. But when she does hers, I was like, Oh my gosh, that hole was so big. And you can't even like notice. So I want to get to that point of the British woman in Bow Nash. Point. You should be making videos because <laughs> you know, Melissa makes the most amazing IGTV videos. I watch them. I don't watch them, but I listen to them on my commute to work when I'm usually working. And it's the best way to start your day off. <laughs> yes. Because you just, you have so many full of information and I just, I love it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Was there any other questions or tips or anything you wanted to share with everybody? Uh, I guess my tip would be, especially now, is it's easy to want to give up and get frustrated. But um, if you're able to make, even if it's just one sale a week during this or one sale a day, give yourself props because we're in a pandemic and it's a positive sign to be moving anything. So I think my best advice is just stay determined and um, you're going to have bad days and you're going to have really good days, but don't get discouraged by the bad days. Remember what, like, I love this and it brings me so much joy. And without Poshmark right now, I'd probably be losing my mind in the community, people like yourself, there's so many people I speak to every day that I was like, I can't, I'm not, I can't picture my life now without these people. I'm going to get, I'm going to cry. <laughs> you. But um, you're going to get discouraged, but don't, don't let it beat you is what I want to say. That yeah. is such powerful advice. I absolutely love that. And going back to the community that you were talking about, who are three PFFs that we should all be following? Yes. XOXO underscore Olivia. Uh, I guess we'll say it's like mom daughter duo because right now mom's taking over why daughter's in school, but Stacy is the mother and she's kind of like a mother to me. She offers very interesting perspectives of on things that I don't even think about. Mm -hmm. And I speak to her every day. Um, Nifty thrifty mommy. I love following her. I met her at Posh Fest. Mother of three, she's a reseller, so I like to, and she's very witty. I love her wittiness, and I love to see how she juggles the three kids with the reselling. And then um, here's Lynn. I love here's Lynn. She's a reseller, but she's very into fitness, as am I. So we have, like, personal cheerleading for each other with, like, working out. So those are three people I really connect with and speak to a lot. There's so many more. I don't want to get that. I didn't mention that. I love that. And just quick on an ending note, we can't talk about PFFs without talking about your husband. How does your husband play a role in your business? He is a huge in this process. Um, he went to Posh Fest with me, which was huge. Like he has no probably desire to walk around, but he went there for emotional support. Um, he is building an office for me in our basement right now. So he's completely gutting and renovating our basement and he is just the cheerleader to when I'm down to give me those pep talks especially today I was I'll be honest I was super nervous I couldn't sleep last night like and he right before he left the house he's like how fun he's like why are you nervous this is fun so he just kind of grounds me and gives me that little kick in the butt at the same time so I like he's so supportive of this I love it <laughs> I love that. What an asset to have in your home yeah. during quarantine. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, Melissa, thank you so much for joining us today. Be sure to check out her shop. It's at Naomi and me on Poshmark. And you could also find her under the same handle on Instagram. Thanks so much for sharing your Posh journey with us and your PFS. And we'll see you later. Thanks for having me. <laughs>